Welcome back to our live stream channel and I'm pleased to share with you a clip today. We had the wonderful opportunity to go to Carl Sandburg Middle School. We visited two Family Consumer Sciences food labs for seventh graders and those two classes are taught by our own AAFCS member and Family Consumer Sciences teacher Heather Jones CFCS. So a big you know shout out to Heather for letting us come to her class and you know observe her um, excellent students in action. We also had the opportunity to talk with some students and they had the added bonus of having Ellen Richards talk with them prior to going into the food lab. So we're gonna share some of that footage with you. So please roll the clip. My name is Heather Jones and I'm a family consumer science teacher and department chair at Carl Sandburg Middle School in Alexandria, Virginia, and also the FCCLA advisor here at the middle school. Great, and so how many students do you teach? We teach around 192 students between myself and another teacher who comes in to teach an additional class in the afternoon. Wow, and, and what type of content is covered in the other consumer sciences class? Well, in middle school, we cover a little bit of everything. It's truly an exploratory class where students can learn about foods and nutrition, they can learn about health and wellness practices, um, child care practices, especially for those younger students who are beginning to babysit out in the communities. Um, they learn about clothing care, textiles, and also how to construct garments. Wonderful. And, and personal development as well. Also a very important part of our curriculum because it's very important to know how to get along with people who maybe aren't exactly like you. That is so true. <laughs> And um, what types of skills uh, do they take with them after taking the program? Well, in middle school, we really focus on students being able to be more independent. Because middle school is one of those great areas of transition where students are having to learn how to get from class to class on time and with all their different materials. Or maybe in elementary school, they were in between one or two classes. Here we have eight periods a day, and so students are responsible for keeping everything together. In high school, the high school that most students go to is on block format, so the organization skills that they learn here in middle school are going to help them when they get to high school and hopefully when they go to college or a career. Great. And today um, you had your first food lab. Yes. <laughs> your seventh graders, and um, can you take us through the, the steps? Sure. Well, to help expedite the process, because we do have a 45 minute class period, um, the teacher prepped most of the ingredients beforehand, with the exception of the bell pepper, the spinach, um, and measuring the cheese at each kitchen station. Um, so when students got into their kitchen, they were responsible first for making sure they had on their apron, making sure their hair was tied back if they were girls or boys with long hair, um, and also washing their hands for the appropriate amount of time and with hot water and soap. Yeah. Um, after that, they are free to start on their lap prep. Um, so we started the students out with taking their cream cheese out of the refrigerator, adding the garlic powder that had been pre-measured, mixing that up, which was kind of tricky for some of them, but something they're going to have to learn. And then they were able to spread that onto tortillas and then sprinkle shredded cheese on top of that, spinach on top of that, and then chopped red bell pepper on top of that. From that point, they were able to fold over their quesadilla and then put it in on either a griddle or a skillet with a little bit of butter or margarine or cooking spray, whichever they chose, um, and then brown it on both sides until it was even. Even they browned. <laughs> and it was going to be delicious. They <laughs> look so tasty. <laughs> and people are commenting out in the hall about how, how delicious it smells. And they're upset that we didn't invite them to come and eat as well. Aww. <laughs> Are you going to have more students signing up for family consumer science? Yes, yes. Students, so how has enrollment been? At well, um, this is my third year at Sandburg. Um, we started out with um, enrollment. We had five solid classes okay. um, with enrollment anywhere from 25 to 30. And now we're to the point where each semester we're able to run three seventh grade classes, three eighth grade classes, and we have an enrollment of 32. And there are students who are on a waiting list and are really begging to get into our classes because it's become so popular. So we've wow. seen a trend upward in enrollment over oh, the last wonderful. three years. Yes. Excellent. Now I just wanted to switch topics for a moment uh, to talk about family consumer science today. 
Yes. So this is, you know, the first official family consumer science day. Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about um, how your school is helping? Oh, yes. Well, we're really excited because we have an FCCLA chapter that is in the beginnings of kind of rejuvenating itself after several years of not being as active. So this was a perfect way for um, our seventh and eighth grade students to get involved with not only National Family Consumer Sciences Day, but also an FCCLA national project, FCCLA okay. at the table. So the, the students during our last FCCLA meeting decided on a couple of ways that they wanted to promote FCCLA, FCCLA and Family Consumer Sciences Day. Um, First, they wanted, to, of course, to encourage other students to sign up and take the pledge to dine in on December 3rd. So a couple of ways we did that. We asked our principal to include in our Keep in Touch newsletter that goes out every week to parents um, the information so that parents could sign up. So that's been going to parents for about two weeks. And then we knew we also needed to target students. So we have a bulletin board up in our main hallway. Before you get to the Panther, we have a very prominent Panther on one hallway. Um, we will be putting table tents on the cafeteria tables tomorrow with QR codes that take students straight to the site where they can log in and be all registered to do the <laughs> dining in. And then also we have little forks with more information. If they aren't QR code users on their phone, okay. it gives them the direct website of where to go. And we're also encouraging them, as AAFCS is encouraging us to do, to take a healthy family selfie and tweet that out, um, put it on Instagram. And we also have a Carl Saber Middle School FCCLA Twitter account. So we're asking them to also, when they send a picture out, to tweet it to us. Very smart. Well, thank you so much for your support of Family Consumer Sciences Day. It was great talking with you. Yes, we're so glad that you came and visited us today. <laughs> yeah, it was we hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Now, in 1909, you'd have to think about it, there were no cell phones, no iPads, no iPods, no radio, no telephones, no computers. Telephones were just getting started by 1909. When Ellen was born in 1842, there were no cars, barely had trains, so all this started well over a hundred years ago and here today um, you're able to come to a class and learn about healthy cooking, healthy eating. She also talked a lot about nutrition and I know I talked to Ms. Jones about what she's still going to cover in this class, a lot about meal planning and a lot about shopping for groceries and budgeting. Cost if, you're, if you had a family of four, and you went through McDonald's. I don't cost like. Um, I know the answer, so I'm. But I'm just saying, you know. Ten dollars. More than that. Twenty. More than that. I guess twenty. Four people. For a family of four. Thirty dollars. You could buy a lot of groceries for thirty dollars. Would feed a family of four for a long time. And that's another reason for, you know, thinking about dining in. A lot of times when our parents work, you know, a couple jobs and they come home late, maybe they pick you up from soccer or dance or something like that, and they don't have time to think about fixing dinner, so drive through McDonald's. $30. For Family and Consumer Sciences Day, we're dining in. I'm going to be making a chicken breaded, like with bread crust on it, with salad on the side. I'm going to be making steak with salad. I'm going to be making homemade lasagna with garlic bread. I'm going to be making chicken with salad. Bacon, eggs, <laughs> bacon. <laughs> and maybe bagels. Maybe bagels. <laughs> So this concludes our coverage for Family and Consumer Sciences Day, our live coverage, but continue to stay tuned online through our social media sites, and please continue to spread the word. Um, we are at what, what number now we can find out, possibly. I think we're getting, getting faster and faster, going faster and faster. Um, so you know, we have until midnight tonight to get to 200,000.
think we're about to get get the number here. 100,782. 100,782. So, so keep keep promoting and and thank you to everyone for what you've done to help support Family Consumer Sciences Day.